oftentimes no one would bother me. I was a very quiet coworker. Sometimes someone would come by, but it was just because I was the only RA with a printer. But that was rare. One night when I was putting together some decorations for my bulletin board, I heard a knock. It took a second to carefully maneuver around my room to the door, but I also said a little, give me a second. I opened the door and no one was there. I felt a pit in my stomach, but I played it off. Guess they didn't need anything after all. When I was younger, anytime something spooky happened, my parents and my grandparents would tell me to play it off as nothing. That was how you got rid of it. Whatever it was would have nothing to feed off of and would leave you alone. The semester soon started and I was busy dealing with residents moving in. Residents crying because they missed home and residents dropping out because they missed home. Sure enough though, an all too familiar event occurred. My keys were hidden in the bottom empty drawer of my dresser. Of course. If this is Wayne, very funny. Message received. It's been three years of this. I sighed. It didn't happen too much more often after that. Only two more events occurred. In October, while decorating my Halloween bulletin board, my ribbon disappeared. And didn't reappear until the next morning. In the same exact spot I was sitting on the floor the previous night. Again, I thought it was Wayne. I blew it off. At this point, I was just treating it like normal. Like having a semi-annoying pet. However, the last event gave my mother reason to perform a blessing. Around November of 2019, I got really, really sick. Sick enough to where, honestly, I should have gone to the hospital. But I didn't because I was stubborn. They said it was the flu, but shortly after, a new illness rapidly spread across the world. <laughs> so who knows if it was the flu or not. It started the day me and a couple friends went to the lake. We bought some canvases and sat on a pier and just painted the whole afternoon. It wasn't cold at all. It was actually a very nice day out. I remember having a dry throat, but I blew it off. Towards the end of the day, I started to get worse. I was burning up horribly. I got to my room, turned off all the lights, checked to make sure my heater was off, and opened my window wide open. I took some ibuprofen and went to sleep. I woke up around 3am feeling worse. Worse to the point where I couldn't even stand. I had to hang off of my bed to throw up into a garbage bin. I was heating up even more. I didn't have a thermostat, but I know my fever must have been enough to have been admitted to the hospital. While trying to get an idea of what was going on, I sat up in bed, and that's when I noticed my window was shut. Was it just me then? Did I just make my room hot? I know I opened that window. Why wouldn't I? Especially after walking into my room and knowing the fresh cool air would make me feel better. I struggled to stand up and used various furniture around my room to walk to my window. Not only was it shut, but it was locked. I never locked my window. There was no need for me to. I lived on the third floor, and I was always opening and closing it. It took all my strength to unlock and slide it open again, and the cool air felt like I had died and reached heaven. And who knows? Maybe that night I would have, because I turned to look at my heater, originally turned off before bed, only to now be turned on to the max. I quickly shut it all the way down again. I was terrified. Under normal circumstances, I probably wouldn't have cared, but I was sick, I was scared, and I was unbelievably vulnerable. I actually ended up fainting, and I woke up on the floor next to my window the next morning. That week, my mom came to take care of me and help me get better. I told her what happened, and she went straight to the nearest Catholic church and got holy water. She stopped by my dorm while I was staying in her hotel room, and she blessed my dorm room. She even blessed the picture of Wayne I had on my wall. It took me about two weeks to feel completely better, 
and about a month for me to fully get my voice back. Currently, I'm a super senior at the same school, and I am living in a completely new dorm. I kind of forgot all about the entity following me around, given the past year of 2020 being everyone's personal hell. An entity being slightly annoying became the least of my concerns. Plus, I was, and still am, excited to be back at school. Everything has been very normal so far. I've been so excited and eager to get back to learning. Even if the first night I stayed in my dorm, someone knocked on my door at 2 in the morning, and when I looked through the peephole, no one was there. That's when I was reminded of the entity. Is it my best friend? Maybe. But why would he almost kill me when I was sick? Is it something impersonating him? That might be the more likely answer. Whatever it is, I'm graduating soon, so it has a year to figure out what it wants with me before I'm gone for good. I do want to mention that after this, I'm not going to be talking about this thing anymore. Um, maybe once after I graduate and I'm off of campus for good, I'll talk about it, but my entire year here, I want to be as safe as possible, both in the physical and spiritual sense. So, after this video is published, I mean, I might answer some comments and if there's if there are any on YouTube, maybe a few tweets for a little while, but if I don't respond to a comment or tweet after the first two weeks of this video being up, it's primarily because I am trying my best to get this thing away from me, um, or at least trying to get it to not be as aggressive with me, because I don't, I don't know what it wants. I don't know who it is, and quite honestly, I don't want to know. At this point, I'm pretty... At this point, I do want to say that it is definitely not my best friend. I don't think it's him. I think he has completely moved on now. Um, it has been... As of this week where I'm recording this, it has been four years since his passing. So... I don't think it's him. Something about it just doesn't feel like him anymore. I think right after he died, it was him for a little bit. And I think he finally moved on. You know, I think he reached a point where he realized that I was going to be okay. And I think he did move on. But I think something else um, took his place. And it's just trying to convince me that it is him but it's not, and I don't think it is. <laughs> so, that's just a heads up, you know, if you leave a comment with a question and I don't answer it, that's honestly why, it's just because I'm trying not to think about this, talk about this, or give whatever it is any more power, because it, it has none, you know, this is... Where I live right now is my home, it's not welcome here, and it never will be, but yeah. I also just wanted to say thanks for listening all the way through. I'm sure this video is a little bit longer than most of my other videos, but I'm glad you listened to it regardless. Um, and if you like these like real life ghost stories, please let me know. I actually have a lot more than this thing following me on campus. Um, I've been seeing shit since I was a kid, and I don't know why. <laughs> but. I wouldn't mind sharing those stories because I think they're kind of neat and I like ghost stories. Anyway, if you like this video, please leave a like, leave a comment with any questions or letting me know that you liked and want to see more. And, you know, I'll see you about doing this again. I hope everyone has a great day and you all stay safe.